Hello everyone, Nordic Beast here, and welcome back to the shipyard. So, I haven't really been posting my videos because I've immersed myself in my real life, but uh, the last few days I have actually been on here, so I figured I'd show you guys some of the things I've been working on. Uh, first off, this is the Timberwolf. Uh, it is physically based on the F-106 Piranha from Wing Commander Prophecy. It has like the same general layout. Watch out upgrade module uh, where it has like these arm supports coming out and it narrows in through the middle and gets wider back there uh, otherwise it's a completely different fighter um, the piranha from wing commander is actually a light fighter well this is more of a medium to heavy attack fighter uh, it's quite fun uh, I posted it on the workshop a few days ago and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description down below I really enjoy this thing uh, first off, it has six rocket pods, three in each wing, and they use Whiplash's weapon sequencer script. God, that thing is infinitely awesome. Thanks, Whiplash. I know you didn't make it for me, but it's still awesome. And then uh, it has the four cannons in the front. Now, originally, this was battery-powered, but I went with a large reactor that's in there, plus a small jumpstart reactor. But originally, with the three batteries, it had three batteries, and I had put a... Uh, Oh, what's it called? Um, oxygen generator here, because it's slightly smaller. But with all the thrust that this thing has, it actually went under 20 minutes in flight time. No bueno. Like, that's just, uh, that, that's not good. <laughs> so, finally, I was like, you know what? I'll put in a reactor. It's a little heavier, uh, and it makes the, the ship a little bit more costly. But it allows this much firepower to go that much further. And I like it. Um, it's handling... Sorry, I'm breathing into my mic here. It's handling is uh, a little sluggish uh, because of its weight. It's with a, I have a times one inventory in it. I have four rockets per pod, four ammo packs per Gatling gun, 100 uranium in the main reactor, and 10 in the small. Uh, with that, it's 29, 29 tons or 29,000 kilograms. So it's, uh, it's relatively hefty. It has uh, five vertical thrusters, uh, both up and down, four to each side, eight reverse, two small in the back, plus four large thrusters, which actually that's the wrong color. Oop. Bam. Man, I don't know why that was... That's weird. Okay. I don't know why that was like that. <laughs> So anyway, uh, it also has six additional thrusters, three under each wing, as you see here, for lunar landings. And uh, I showed this to Dracul, and Dracul's like, well, you know, you could just leave them on and, uh, you know, be conscious of it and allow it for better maneuvering thrusters. And I'm like, that's not a bad idea. So the option to shut them off is there, but it's really up to you. Uh, it's really not that bad an idea, because this thing can actually corner pretty well using those additional thrusters. So... Like I said, it's up to you. It's up to the pilot. I really like this thing, though. Uh, it hits like a dump truck. Uh, it maneuvers, like I said, it's a little sluggish. Uh, it accelerates quite well. And the other thing is, because of the way it's designed with these uh, like outriggers to the thruster pods and everything, this thing can take a beating and keep flying. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to win you a fight, but your character will remain alive, and you'll be able to get home. So that's something to think of. Uh, again, it may not be, it may not be the fastest, but it does have a lot of firepower and a lot of armor. So, honestly, this is like an American fighter from World War II. <laughs> Big, heavy, lots of weapons, very survivable, and with no heavy armor either. Uh, which, a lot of time, it's it's kind of hard to make a survivable fighter without heavy armor. So, all right, next up, uh, this little guy here. A couple episodes back, I actually showed him as a, a prototype of a bunch of other fighters that, you know, just concept fighters. And that's essentially what it was. And I, I happened to pull it out, was like, wow, this really is a cool looking fighter. I'd like to do something with it. So I reworked it and I finished it. I haven't got a name for it yet. Uh, I moved the tail from over there to the wingtips. It kind of gives it more of that uh, space plane look, even though this is not atmospheric at all. Uh, the whole idea was just a, a light fighter that was more versatile and it has merge blocks, so you can use merge block weaponry. Uh, decoys, bombs, uh, drones if you wanted, rocket pods, 
guided missiles, torpedoes, things of that nature. Uh, it only has the two cannons, but they're very tightly focused, as well as the one rocket launcher, which is, like, this is like the sniper spot for rockets. You know, you put them right up in the nose, you just, you can hit a target every freaking time. So I also upgraded it by adding an extra thruster on the top. As you see here, there's only three. Uh, it also has one on the bottom as well. So it's four directional thrusters, uh, six reverse, and then four large in the back. You know, my pretty standard. And then it has uh, four batteries, so this thing actually flies for a good while. I think it's like half an hour of flight time, something like that, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, so one of, the th one of the reasons why I reworked this and got it, you know, a bit more flushed out and functional... Oh, and actually, scratch that. This also has a couple additional thrusters on the bottom for lunar landings. <laughs> I like my space fighters being able to land down on the moon. Which, uh, yeah, I got a base in that crater right there. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of time, like, if I design something up here, like, this is where I tend to build most of my ships. Um, I, I test them by flying them down there. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I've wanted, like, an aggressor fighter, or if I end up doing some more cinematics in the future, which I would like to do, I've actually had, like, the urge to want to make some form of cinematic, or for, like, the Glorious Adventures, if I ever get back to that again, uh, an aggressor fighter, or, like, a, you know, just an opponent, and I think this is a good candidate. It's small, maneuverable, and, you know, cheap, easy to build, easy to fly, so even for, like, newer people in the game, if I were to use for something like that, for like a cinematic, it's a very easy ship to fly. So, yeah, uh, I'll have to get a name for that at some point. Alright, so next up is this fun guy here, but I figured I'd walk you guys through a little bit of my building history. So, this thing over here, the NTS-7 Odin, I built this two years ago <laughs> in Space Engineers, this was just before pistons came out, because eventually I removed this area here and put a giant blast door piston lift, which, you know, with all these here, I'm not sure if that would have worked and all that. I, I can't remember. Like, this is, again, before that, and it's before oxygen and all that. But this is my first carrier design, my first big ship, really, because uh, I switched from this just god-awful computer I was using... F um, to my uh, my wife's iMac, uh, which is still a good computer, and that's from like 2012. But I had it dual boot. Uh, I was using it to uh, to run Windows. Actually, my earliest recordings, like my first shipyard episode, was on that computer. Uh, my first NID season two episode was with the computer I'm currently using, which uh, significantly better. Oh, let's let's fix this little hole here. Boop. There we go. Um, yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, this was before connectors worked. Like I said, before oxygen. And God, this is just look at how terrible this thing looks. It's uh, it's not a bad design actually. Uh, but yeah, it would not work well in modern space engineers. And look at this design. Because like I said, the the connectors they all they could do at the time was eject. So you had collectors. So you just use this design. This would spit them out, and the collector would collect it up. So you just dock next to a ship, and, uh, you know, you got the landing gear there to lock it in place. It's got a little walkway here. Yeah, so this is before merge blocks. Jesus, this thing is ancient. It's actually... F Does this just drop you all the way down? Oh, that's right. So this also gets you to this level, as you can overlook here. Yeah, I get the realistic sounds on. It is... That's how loud that is. That's way too damn loud. They need to uh, touch that up. But yeah, each station here, you can kind of like overlook what's going on down there. So I don't know the purpose of all this. I mean, this thing, like I said, is really old. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and then uh, I remember uh, my latest version of this had like a, a walkway there. So anyway, this, this design, the whole point of all this... <laughs> was you can see like I, I did like an internal uh, like repair area you know like uh, there was no docking yet so you just bring the ships down here you got the welders you can access uh, these cargo containers which led up to uh, the collectors and the 
uh, connectors up here, and then also, you know, getting the ship next to the large welder, you could weld it or weld it by hand to get tools out of there, whatever. And then you get the nice big deck up here for landing. So this eventually led to my hand of tier design, which of course is my fully updated version, uh, which of course has, you know, a nice big open bay with the airtight doors, and it's got like the same big open deck with the connectors, but it's, it's a bit of a cramped design. Uh, I like it, I like the catamaran design, like the, you know, everything's on either side with the, with the big internal bay and the big top deck. So then, after I built, like, the Sif and the Thor and the Balder, I kind of did, like, a... They're still spaceships, but they, they have, like, the influence of a ship. And that's part of what makes them physically attractive. And so I was trying to make a carrier, which, of course, I showed this a while back, uh, with the tier, the Hand of Tear. And uh, this design uh, uses all light armor, and it's very lightweight for its size. It's 5 million kilograms. Um... And, you know, I've got a lot of recessed thrusters, and the, the thing is, it's got a lot of open room, unlike the tier. So you can store a lot, but there's not a lot of connectors. And that's a bit of an issue to me. Uh, also, internally, I wasn't completely happy with it, but I loved how you could overlook the bay. So, using influence from this, I've kind of mixed everything I had learned into this. Uh, so the first one was named the Odin, but again, that thing's ancient. I never even posted it. So this is my new Odin. It's just the Odin, but it's the new one. Oh, I was like, is somebody in here? It's my own damn shadow. I'm, I'm an idiot. So uh, the only thing left on here is I still need to do a little coloration. Let's see, uh, lots and lots of solar panels. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to Spectator for this because there's a lot of this ship. So, bam. All right. Come over here. So if you go through the front doors... You see, we have a nice, big, open area. So these front bays here are smaller than these ones, as you can see. These are utility bays uh, designed basically for, like, welding grinding ships for repair on the Odin or on any ship it's carrying. So these standard bays can carry pretty much any small ship I've built. Uh, one of the largest, I guess, uh, ships of my fleet would be... Uh, of small ships anyway, would be my Salford shuttle. And the Salford fits in there beautifully. Like, I have no issue with it. Uh, I can actually fit a Valkyrie here with a Valkyrie behind it. Uh, so I can actually carry an additional 12 Valkyries if I want. So as you see, each one has a couple of seats. Uh, so you can uh, charge. Uh, it's There's oxygen in here. So you can run around without your helmet as long as you're not launching fighters out of here. Uh, and you have access to uh, the cargo container, which all this leads underneath to utility area up to these connectors. So it's all connected. So yeah, I started basically with this, with like this internal bay, and then I started with the windows up here, and then I just kind of went from there. So one of the interesting parts is like this area here, it's part of this bulge. After I built like all those bays and the windows and everything, I built this bulging section. And I was like, should I make it armor? And I'm like, no, 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 no. This thing is not a combat ship. It's meant to just launch fighters and things like of that nature. If you're in direct combat, if you're getting hit, you're not doing your job correctly. Uh, so I wasn't going to waste any resources on making this thing armored. But uh, I like this kind of enclosed industrial look with all these spars and everything. So, all right. Uh, next up, I guess we could show the utility area underneath. Actually, through here, you can kind of see how everything connects. Uh, so it's all oxygen uh, and reactors and batteries underneath. Uh, I added all these batteries here uh, because of the solar panels, which would be a nice emergency backup also helps with the six jump drives this thing has, and it still only goes about 1,700 kilometers. Um, it runs on all small reactors as well, no large. And this is also where all the gyros are. So, i uh, got tons of oxygen generators, and we also have a bunch of small cargo containers down here. So, and this is all oxygenated as well. Or pressurized, whatever, oxygenated. The, the way to get in here, let me hop to my first person. So, is this the back, right? This is, I want to say this is the back. Nope. Okay, this is the front. 
All right, so it's through the front door. You go either down or you can go this way to go up. Which these hallways uh, are identical, mirrored on either side, and uh, they. I guess I can take my helmet off. They both have oxygen, so which I can. Lots of oxygen. And this is the way downstairs. There you have it. So then you have to go all the way around, all the way down there to get into that central area. I have tons of LCDs, but I haven't put anything on them yet. Uh, this actually has the ability to carry three scripts, if you want. So, all right, go back to spectator real quick. Now, one of my other favorite features is what I call the Wiseman Room. This room right here. It is a pressurized room that uh, allows ships to, to come in without lo losing pressure. Now, this is something that Wiseman did in his Whale Shark design uh, with the over overlooking window. I really like that. So a ship could come in here, you close, you look down, check on them. I might actually add a couple interior turrets in here, too, just, uh, you know, in case somebody tries anything funny. But then you can come through here, because it, it has the, uh, the oxygen in here, so you pressurize, open these doors, and in, in you go. All right, so up here. Oops. No, actually, let's show the back off real quick. Uh, these areas back here, we have cargo containers, and this is also like our server room. And then the opposite side has a bit more in it. Um, as you see, we have the two cargo containers, a refinery, fully upgraded, and two assemblers. Now the reason all this is here and not on the other side is because the flight bridge is on the other side. So, come back through. Now, alright, we go to the front, which I had been doing. Alright. So we go up the hallway here. I finally finished these rooms. It took a while. So Cryo Bay, the first two rooms, and it's mirrored for either side. Uh, Med Bay, eight Cryo Bays, and plenty of seats. Through. Next one. Uh, let's see. Yep, this is a crew room. So there's four crew rooms total. Which, uh, I think it's four guys per. So, you see here, it's identical to the previous one. Uh, let's see, what are you? Flight room, or like a briefing room, which is mirrored on the other side. I believe... Okay, this is like, um, like a mess hall. I'm not very good with the vanilla blocks to make rooms like this. So, um... I'll probably put on like all the signs and everything what each room is. So this is like a commons area, you know, just like a kind of like a meet and greet hangout area. And uh, that again it all overlooks the bay. Uh, so this is like the command and control center that also overlooks the Wiseman pressurized room. So uh, all these LCDs will have, you know, different scripts running, tons of buttons. Uh, basically, again, you you command the ship from here. This is your command and control. And then last but not least, before we go up, is this room. Uh, the other side is the uh, like mess hall room. This is the captain's quarters. So, yeah, Not a whole lot to it, but uh, I decided to put in some extra button panels and stuff. <laughs> just in case you wanted to set something up from you know your actual quarters. So. Alright. And next through here. This is the uh, like battle bridge, the internal bridge. So I I have three timers downstairs in the server room, and then I put one here, just because I like the aesthetics of it. So, uh, I still have three programmable blocks and three timers. Just one of the programmable blocks is up here. So, Alright, we come up here. Now this is like a... Um, this allows you... Oh, come on, get back up there. Uh, this goes directly out onto the deck. And then you can continue upstairs to the flight bridge, which I really like the flight bridge. I'm quite pleased how this turned out. And it's what, 12 million? 12 million, 144,226 kilograms. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty design. Uh, in total, it has eight thrusters to the rear, eight to the front. As you see here, eight to the front. Eight encased to the rear. I really like those thruster pods. 
Uh, you have four thrusters up and down. So you see, they got the two on the front, two on the back, and then we just have two to either side. So not a whole lot for yaw. But overall, I'm very, very happy. Uh, there is four Gatling turrets, as you see, two on either side, for defense. And then uh, on the bridge, there's two interior turrets, and then there's an, uh, an interior turret on the deck. The deck turret has no guns. Uh, it is manual only, and it is designed to just look around the deck. Uh, so whoever's controlling flight operations has a camera to look around on the deck. That's That was the whole point. <laughs> So, yeah, the only thing, uh, I, I still want to add a little bit more color to it, uh, a little bit more design. Otherwise, this thing is done. And I have never been happier with one of my carriers, even over the Hand of Tear, which I loved that thing, but this is obviously highly influenced by it. So, I might add a little bit more deck lights, because I got those yellow ones up on the front. I might add white ones going to the back, but I don't know. They just kind of get burned out from ships flying from the deck. <laughs> so yeah anyway uh you know leave a comment down below let me know what you think and uh once i'm done i will post a link down in the description for this one once it's on the workshop so i hope you guys enjoyed uh if you did hit that like button i'll see you guys next time